Welcome to the chaos. What up, everybody, and welcome back to the chaos. I'm your host, Mikey Tableman, alongside my co-host, Daniel Sun Gomez. Daniel, it's Daniel Sun now. Okay. Daniel Sun Gomez. I like that one. Today on the chaos, we have joining us producer, director, creator of of his new sketch show, A Kid from Brooklyn, which is out now, which is f***ing hysterical. Uh, showrunner of this man is dealing with so much in the entertainment industry. If you haven't seen his face, you absolutely will at some point. My boy, Dylan Lennon. Oh, what's up? Thank what's you so up, much. Buddy? You know what? Let's just jump right into being a producer-director because we do have the brand new series out now, but it's not a sketch series. It's, not a, oh, it's you... a single-camera scripted comedy. Ooh. Good kid from Brooklyn. You know, we got to get the branding right. Get the branding right. Get the Thank you so right. much. But Mikey Tableman doing it big. We go way back. Way, way back. Way back to the beginning of Los Angeles, basically. I mean, pretty much when I moved here and you moved here, we were in the same spot, got into the same nightclub, and everyone's like, yo, f*** these two. They just talk the whole time. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> like, right. Shoot this sh- and kick it. Like, 100%. Yeah. But we had a good run. Good run. So it's good to see you nah, doing man, everything so good. you're doing. So I, happy to be here. But either way, I really was so proud of you when I was at the <laughs> opening, when I was at the, uh, the screening of it. Thank you for you, coming. Like, I just remember hearing you talking about this like 10 years ago and we all talked about all these big dreams that we had and like, yo, we're both doing it. And yo, man, you're really killing it. Thank you, Bar. Like, appreciate you it. Thank so, you, So like, bro. you fill everybody in kind of on like what, like what's going on with you, all these projects you're on, man, you're doing so much. Thank you so much. So it's been going good. You know, I started in the industry uh, hosting live streams for music festivals, ultra music festival, hangout music festival, life is beautiful, global dance and bunch, bunch more. Uh, and after getting that first job hosting ultra music festival back in the day, I moved to LA, right? You're trying to do it big, want to be the edgy Ryan Seacrest. You know, it's hard out here though, you know, <laughs> and just waiting around to be cast in something is is not really the way to live. So nope. that would be like the first piece of advice. If you want to go out there and do something, you got to go make life happen, right? So that's even the way I got the ultra job by like just shooting a electronic music dance show on a cell phone and, and just making it as good as possible and sending it out to a million people. We could come back to that. But basically, uh, lately, I'm the showrunner of The Impulsive Show with Logan Paul. We do about 2 million people an episode. It's huge, massive, but make no mistake, I work for Logan. It's a great opportunity to be there, and uh, it's a privilege to be a part of that team. But we do great work, and it's a great team working with A-list guests across the board. So be sure to like, subscribe, and watch Impulsive. Across all platforms, we're doing 11 million views. So every time we're trying to get talent to come on the show, it's like, this is what we're offering. We're offering a global platform for you to talk about what you got going on. Um, And so we're trying to still, even uh, as a digital first show, crack the Hollywood A-list as much as possible. And we've had great guests. We've had Arnold Schwarzenegger, Snoop Dogg, Sebastian Maniscalco, Gabe Iglesias, Tony Robbins, Mike Tyson, Russell Brand, Nick Kroll, and so many more with more to come. Um, And then also got fortunate enough to now be involved with the Eli Manning Show, which is the most successful digital content across all of the New York Giants franchise basically so that's just been great yo how cool is that gotta be because bro we're from new york and i remember when eli manning beat tom brady in the super bowl not once but twice that's like what we have to i mean the yankees have been good but that's like what we got right now like that's that's what we got got. and i'm a jet fan and for football that's still all i got so i mean like i would say it's like you working for mark sanchez but mark sanchez is not quite the same as eli manning but you know what i'm saying (laughs) nah so being a giants fan and working with eli has been amazing so we've got to do we've gotten to do amazing things like work with uh, pete davidson and at this point michael b jordan rob Gronkowski, kevin hart ryan reynolds jimmy Alan, it's just been awesome and working with Eli and becoming, you know, essentially his friend has been uh, has been really cool being a Giants fan. Did you have anything so. to do with like his Super Bowl, like uh, the coaching and all that? Were you around so that at all? The Pro Bowl stuff? Yeah, yeah. No, the Pro Bowl stuff is different. So it, it Bowl, gets complicated Bowl, yeah. about Eli because Eli's got three shows. Eli does the Manning cast with his brother, which That's is produced f- Omaha, Omaha. Then he does... Eli's Places, which is his ESPN Plus show, and then he does the Eli Manning show, which is the Giants' original project that that we're involved with. So oh, anytime gosh. you see Eli doing anything involved with like a celebrity, any sort of like viral clip, besides Chad Powers, that was the other company. Good, good job on them. <laughs> um, everything else is is the Giants. So what what is what kind of content is, is are they putting out? Because I'm not familiar with his that side of his his business. Right. All right, so the first thing you got to do is like, subscribe, and follow New York Giants all across social media to you know be involved in everything that we got going on. So just recently, Eli was appearing on the Today Show, and they talked about pickleball. 
Then Rob Gronkowski went on the Today Show, and they were like, he talked about pickleball, and he said, yo, Rob, uh, Eli was just here. He plays pickleball, too, and he said, yo, and Rob said, I would whoop Eli. So then we took that as the genesis of an idea that why don't we just have Eli and Rob go play pickleball together? Yes. So as an episode of the Eli Manning Show, we had Rob and Eli duke it out one-on-one. They play pickleball epic battle uh so that's available to watch in full on youtube rob and eli play pickleball most of our views come across social media so then all the clips that go out uh of them playing each other so similar so same thing with pete davidson pete and eli uh they never met before they both don't have an instagram so the idea struck oh they both don't have an instagram why don't they create an instagram that they share together so that really caught fire and kind of went viral a little bit and got a lot of national media attention but the the clip itself was just them sort of hanging out all the natural funniness that comes from that because eli's amazing the best thing we could do is just like get out of his way put him with great talent give him a world to live in and let him do his thing it seems to be working because anything you see Eli do is f-ing hysterical. I mean, I love watching him. I, I'd rather watch him and Peyton broadcast the game right. than Fox at NBC, yeah. CBS. Like it doesn't matter. It's they're so f-ing funny. No, they're amazing. They're they're just great. And working with athletes are awesome because they're used to like being coached, right? So they're just like, all right, let me know what you need. All right, I got that. And like they want to be as best as possible. So working with athletes has been awesome. I'm from New Orleans, so you know we we love the Mannings. Yeah, you know what I'm let's saying. Let's go. Come on, man. We 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 hope we get the new arch. Exactly. When he gets up to to the age, you never know because the right. Saints are pretty right, right now. now. Yeah, exactly. Right, now. So, <laughs> right, 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 right. right. Hey, the Giants like, can feel the pain right now, though. Yeah, not man. not this year. You guys, right? Were we awesome, know. Man. We know was, all about I was, it. I like the Giants, man. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you so much. So, brother, you're doing a lot of really cool shit, and obviously. Your energy is amazing. I love when you just come in here and f-ing turn it on, bro. I'll do. I'll work anything. <laughs> awesome, man. It lifts me up. And you're doing some really cool shit. But that wasn't always the case. Because, bro, when we got to LA, we both had nothing. Like, bro. But, like, bro, I think we would, like, go out. To, we would try to go out to eat after we worked at nightclub. And we're like, yo, can we afford this right now? Bro. Like, what place were y'all working at? If we were well, at, It was DBA. First of all, working at DBA was fire. Because at that point, when we worked at DBA, it was the hottest club in yeah, LA. it was. For, like, we six opened, months. We opened it, yeah. Yeah, and it was dope. And, like, we had, there was one night there that it was just cracking when, like, Miley Cyrus and Usher was there and, like, Bieber was there. It was just cracking. And at least if you're going to work in the industry, yeah. you want to be at the place that was yeah. the most cracking. But, yeah, dude. Well, for us, though, it was brand new, though, because that was our our first like entrance into i mean i was already working in la nightlife but not in that capacity like not with that going on like create was f-ing different grace right. had its own type of celebrity so this was like a broad range of it but that place was so f-ing cool for us to be like oh f-ing, there's a lot on of santa monica at the same time Boy- yeah it's Boy- 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 on, yeah, yeah. Boy- D- uh, D- delilah now. dba delilah now yeah. Yeah, yeah gotcha yeah so it was wild um but uh, yeah bro there was times I had a stack of um free burrito or bowl from chipotle and if I didn't have that stack, I would have not eaten for months. Yeah. So I had one meal a day at like four o'clock every day because of these cards. Cause I literally just was in the negatives for so long. And even up until like pretty recently, it's just been like, yeah, the past two years, best year of my life. So it's awesome. Um, but yeah, dude, just like the struggle is real. Like they say, but you know what you want and you don't, you're going to have like zero tolerance to do anything beyond what you want to do yes you have to like make ends meet and pay rent but like yeah dude it's hard out there you got to just like do what you got to do what'd you do to keep yourself mentally strong because like you said man it's been almost 10 years yeah. until two years ago you were still struggling like what'd you do to keep yourself in the game because we've seen so many people come and go since we've been here like what did you do to keep yourself grounded and like kept your eye on that prize which you're there now yeah i mean well first of all hot yoga every day in the morning if i don't do hot yoga in the morning like i'm just off even today like i did it and thank god because even before i was like kind of all over the place but i haven't always been doing it but if i do hot yoga in the morning that's my medicine thank god meditation twice a day 20 minutes i don't do it twice a day i'm supposed to but anytime you're part of meditation and you say well you know i've been off lately well are you doing it twice a day for 20 minutes and if the answer is no well that's your answer do it twice a day 20 minutes and even for myself i would like to be better at doing it twice a day for 20 minutes so that's vedic meditation it's the ayurveda you had to like meet a meditation teacher you had to like gift fruit to like his the, like the Buddha or whatever. I don't even know what it's called. Uh, and then you get a mantra and it's like, uh, you get like indoctrinated into the world. It's, it's just, you get your personal mantra and then that's your mantra forever. So every day, 20 minutes, I definitely do it every day in the morning. Um, and then agape, if you know about agape, which is Sundays in LA, which is like a, a non-denominational spiritual center. Highly recommend that for everyone. But like, you know what? I'm Jewish. I go to black church. You know what I'm saying? Like I with that shit. the music is fire yeah, like yeah. i'm all about like the 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 beliefs and stuff and the messaging also i didn't know that like at church a lot of the stuff is like jewish stuff because like the old testament i guess is like jewish 
So they'd be talking about like Abraham and shit. I'm like, oh, I get down with that. Um, <laughs> And so, but a lot of the messages is good. Um, and, and the singing is great. You walk out of there floating. You feel and great. Then feel great. So like, you know, temple, I'll go to temple on the high hall. I go to black church more than I go to temple, you know, but temple for the high holidays and stuff. And then that agape on a weekly basis for sure. So your spirituality is what has really kept you grounded yeah, and able to go and like knowing that, yo, I'm supposed to be here. I'm going to be guided. Let me just go make sure they're guiding me. And it's yeah. and a structure. I feel like. You, I feel like you you go so fast that you needed that structure to like maybe balance you out. Or well, every time you walk out of service, you feel good. Yeah. So and just a reminder to like get in touch with God and like stay grounded and just like think about stuff like that and just be in gratitude also. So you know, also like the good, the best advice also is like you can't like think your way into feeling better. Like thought follows action. So it's like, oh, I'll work out when I feel better. It's like, no, you got to work out and you'll feel better. So it's like same thing with the hike. You don't want to do that. I don't want to wake up for yoga, but it's like get up and I'm back home in my house at eight forty five in the morning, ready to go, feeling amazing. And if I don't go to yoga, what was I just doing for the last hour? Like on my phone in bed. Like you know what I'm saying? So it's like just get out and get going. The hardest part for me is just waking up early, man. I'm, I've never been a, a morning person. So I like to, I applaud you for being in the service industry, nightclub, especially, and then being able to transition to. Well, that was like, crazy. Just going home at five o'clock in the yeah. morning. Like no one wants to do that. That clock was in. Yeah. You're like my, my timer to go to sleep was when the sun was coming up. Yeah. That's not normal. So yeah. it was time to leave the after party. Oh yeah. Or that. Or that. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to be at after parties. I, for me, my mental health, if I have like a strong social life, like I'm chilling. But like, that's hard too, you know, just oh, like sure. being in the mix with like the right people and, and stuff like that. But for me, that's like the big thing. Cause it's like, work's going really good. You know, physically things are good. You're just like staying healthy, but yeah, to have balance with the social life, uh, and, you know, and trying to get some ladies in my life. You feel me? Cause like, you know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm with you, man. You know, but you're I was very- telling my, I was having a cold streak lately. It's tough out there. <laughs> ladies. For that hot yoga though. That- yeah. I go to Beverly Hills hot yoga in the morning. There's not that many cute girls, but you know, I look, I see, yeah. you know, I, I clock them. I clock him, see who's there. I'm sure there's a bunch of cute girls watching, so if you want to find Dylan, insert here. Yeah, holler at, holler at your boy. <laughs> Put all of his links, you know. You could be on a bachelor. I could definitely see that. Nah, no bachelor for me. No, <laughs> no, bachelor. no bachelor for me. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. I'll produce the bachelor or direct uh, the bachelor. You produce a lot of, so yeah. how'd you get into that then? Because you, you've done a lot of in front of the camera stuff, yes. right? You've done a lot of red carpet hosting. You've yes. interviewed a lot of celebrities. Like, I mean, bro, you got no problem talking anybody that's as you my, can see that's my bread and butter that's my happy place working live working with celebrity talent talking to them like they're a real person um not being like a robotic host that you might see on an entertainment news network even though i would probably take that job i'm not saying no but that's uh sort of how the industry is different now first of all those host jobs don't even exist anymore right so waiting around to get cast in something like that was never the play so what did i do i was sitting around with a uh, friend uh, and I, he said, what do you do for a living? And he was like, well, I own a sneaker store. And I go, Pawn Stars for dope sneakers. Let's go. So I hired a couple ki- camera kids, went to his sneaker shop, made a sizzle tape, sold a show one for one. I was like, oh, shit, this is easy. So I wasn't in front of the camera, just sold an unscripted show to MTV, which was great. I was like, oh, I could just do this again. So then not waiting around to be on camera, I just did that same philosophy four more times. So I made four more deals with great partners like Mark Wahlberg or Ben Silverman or Tom Beers or NBC Universal. Those shows didn't go to air, but I had great partnerships, great development steps, learning the business, um, and just a lesson of like, okay, if you're not, if you're you want to be in the business. You love Hollywood. You want to be, you know, Mark Burnett. You want to be Edgy Ryan Seacrest. Like you got to go make shit happen. So again, make life happen. Same thing. How did you originally get into that that MTV door to pitch, be able to pitch that show? So another lesson. So it's like you're 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 trying your best to like get pitch meetings and be introduced to the right people and like send the perfect email or get that meeting. Literally, who bought it? Got connected via email to the the executive at thing, and he said, "Yo, this is cool." And he was like, come in. Like, that was it. Like, super low key. Got connected to the right person, sent them the link. They liked it. That's it. The work speaks for itself. So it's not about like, it's, you don't have to like overthink it. The work speaks for itself. Send it. And if they want it, they'll do it. That's, that's what people don't understand. Like, the old model is so dead. Like, you come out, like, for an actor, you come out here, you get an, you, an agent, you start auditioning. Like, that is over. It's over. You know what I'm saying? Like, people are shooting their own content. There's so many places online to put their shit up. Like, you have to go get it if you really want. Also, you can be the best actor. It doesn't mean you're going to get that job. It's like they're looking for someone. So if you don't get that job, it's just you were never going to get that job. They have someone in mind. Right. So that's it. 
So you just stand around and like hope for that. I still love acting. That's why I made the the pilot. Yeah. And I'm really proud of it. It's out now. Check it out. Good Kid from Brooklyn. It's on my Instagram, Dylan Landon, or you could, you know, Google uh, or YouTube Good Kid from Brooklyn. What's the synopsis? Um, about? It's a single camera comedy. It's based on my real life. 99% of what you're about to see is 100% true. Um, every line of dialogue, every story in it is all exactly true. So that's what I was inspired to do is just translate real life into a scripted format. It's basically, if you could imagine, like Insecure meets Seinfeld. Oh, That's the vibe. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, oh, this is like such a Seinfeld vibe. I'm like, oh man, that New York just... Yeah, so yeah. It's, like, it it's called Good Kid from Brooklyn. It's a real life. I play myself. The three actors that play my best friends are inspired by my real friends, which is a girl, a black gay guy, a mixed gay guy, and a white bro. So those are my three best friends, and that's what we try to show in the show. It's like the diversity of the friendship and like being friends with a gay guy is like no nothing to even blink about. Like that's my friend. Like you know, so we showcase that. Um, you know, we do celebrity interaction on the carpet and stuff like that. So uh, that 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 was my happy place. Being on set, directing, having the screening the next day, just floating, feeling like okay, this is what I'm meant to be doing. But whether that leads it or talent leads it or producing leads it, it's all about like being a person in Hollywood. Like only like two moments in my life, I was like, okay, yes, that's lightning bolt. I'm supposed to be doing that on stage, high school play, making people laugh, spotlight. I was like, okay, this is it. And then like at home, it was probably like The Apprentice or something, which at the time was getting like 40 million people to watch. And like at the end, while as a family, we're watching the show and like created by Mark Burnett. I was like, okay, that's baller. I was like, that's what's up. Oh, he's so done. like, so like created by like that vibe to be responsible for something that impacts pop culture on like a global scale creatively and then also performing. Yeah. So Mark Burnett has done everything. Can you explain who that is? Like people who aren't familiar. I mean, Mark Burnett's work. probably maybe times have changed a little bit, but at one point and still one of the most pr powerful television producers in the world, the apprentice survivor, just you name it. He's behind it. You talked about being on that like such high, you know, while you were shooting, everything was up there. If you're high, you have to be low, right? So how many times have you been on that high? Like, oh, shit, this is about to sell. Oh, this is about to come out. And then it doesn't. What was that fallout like? Because again, man, you're, you're telling everybody all the great things about you and they're, bro, we can go for days. But what we want to do here is like, yo, man, you're Please. a human being. Yeah, you're a human being too. There were some struggles you had to Bro, go to it's to get 80, to where 20. you are. I'm filled with anxiety and depression 80% of the time. Let's talk about that. And then 20% of the time is like lit. So, and that 20%, you're like, yo, man, like this is how it's supposed to be. Like, why can't it be like this all the time? Because that's also just not how life is, works, you know? So, but what's it like, you know, be having to be on set and being, you have to be on if you're around Eli, Derek, yeah. Jeter, uh, Logan. If you're in a really depressed mood, how are you navigating that, bro? Like, that's not, that's such a hard thing to do. Well, for me, like even right now, my spirits are lifted because I'm around people. Yeah. And LA happens to be like a very isolating place. You know, I live alone. I essentially work alone. So not being around people, and that's the thing about being social is really important to me because it's like when I have the opportunity to work with people, I do feel better. So those are the times when I do feel better. It's really when I'm not with the people and I'm by myself all day, days at a time, you know, sometimes you don't even use your voice because you're not talking to anybody. So that's, that's the most challenging part. And how do you know, how, you just have to believe that like the shitty times don't last and even those great times don't last. So it's all fluctuates. What goes on in your head and what, what are you doing during those shitty times? Cause like you can't, I've tried it where you just keep working through it and yeah. that doesn't always work. No, I guess just knowing that like, all right, it's hard though, because like an actor, right? Like you get your job and you're like, oh, yo, shit, I'm going to always keep working. And then like you don't have a job. You're like, wait, am I ever going to get a job again? As soon as you get home, yeah, it's like, when it, where's what, what's going on? My phone isn't yeah. like no, no emails. Every email you get, you're like, mate, no. So if, if there's a way to just know, you know what? The next job is coming. Same thing with like mentality. It's like when you're feeling shitty, it's like, all right, you know what? I'll get back to that place soon so it, i'm going yeah, through some shit right now easy though it's like to convince yourself no of you're it, still like, you're not yeah. changing your state you're just announcing that you're aware of it you know that's but also all you've you been do. doing it you've been doing it for a while like yeah in the beginning it, it does weigh on you a lot but after you do it you know just with auditions you know in the beginning i would like oh my god i should have done this i should have done this but now like i do it and i, I forget about it yeah that's all like the more do. you do it the more you the more shows you pitch the more times you get you get uh uh rejected yeah. No, believe me, I've said to myself many times, like if I was a different person, there's no way I would be staying here. It's just knowing like what I'm supposed to be doing. This is just having, I believe time's a circle, right? If you want to get into this, shit, right? So like time's not linear, like the past exists right now, the future exists. It's all happening at the exact same time. Uh, we just can't access that. We only experience time linear, linearly. So I feel very strongly that whatever my future self, my 
my purpose highest in life, version. the highest version of myself already exists. So I'm driven to align with that. So I won't tolerate not pursuing that. So it's like, I know that exists. So it's about setting myself up, putting myself in a position to do that. But like, I'll go see psychics, astrologers, therapists, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to ask all about that because I do the same thing. And and like, for me, it's a confirmation. Like you have a feeling, you have an intuition. Like you're saying, like you're supposed to be, you know, looking up to that person. That person's supposed to guide you. If you're connected to yourself and your highest self, you're walking in that line. You don't have to worry about anything a hundred percent, but not many people have that perspective well that's why we're here trying to educate people you right. know what i'm saying like yo spirit i don't think people realize like how much spirituality plays such yeah. a big part because you gotta like it's a comp- concept of manifestation but then also trust which is so hard yeah. to get on board with well it all starts with like the hierarchy of needs like taking care of your needs like now i can pay my rent i can go to miami if i want to i can pay for a hotel room if i want to i can go out to dinner if i want to like i couldn't do any of that so like I never went on vacation. I still don't go on vacation. Like I don't even know what that is. Like no, we work. You know exactly. So but the idea of like not like knowing my rent is paid this month like is an amazing. Like I don't even think about paying rent this month, which is awesome and it's so grateful. Like you don't understand negative, bro. Yeah. Negative. You get in, like, like you get in, in the, the mind. negative. Yeah, but like you know to be aligned, body, mind, soul, right? Yeah. So you get up every morning and go into yoga, body. You're not having to worry about anything like that. Okay, your mind's at ease and now your soul feels good because you're doing what mm. you want. That's why you're so successful but I just right pray, now. And I pray, you know, and I pray. I was like, thank God, like, please keep this going. And like, like, allow me to like be my best self every day. That's you part of the vibration. Saying? Yeah. You're, you're, if you're grateful, more gratitude brings in more things to be grateful for. I mean, that's also it. If the more you're like, trying for stuff like that, like, yes, you have to like, pursue what you want, but like that energy of like, you're pushing it away, you know, just trusting that like, you know, so it's like, you don't say, oh, I want a big house. You're like, yo, I love how big my house is. You know what I'm saying? So if you just radiate what it is, it comes to you, like you're saying. Fucking- yeah, I love how many hot girls are in my life. You feel me? <laughs> I love how much money I have. Me too. I love how big my house is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but I love how successful this podcast is, <laughs> baby. This podcast exactly. is so successful. We are killing it in a $100 million studio in the basement. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. But no, you're, like, you're right. you got to believe it. And there's so many people that will count themselves out because they're like, I just can't do that. It's like, yo, did you even try? They're so afraid of failure where like, it's not a failure. It's a lesson. You gotta, you're going to fail. But as long as you keep getting up. Rocky line. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let me ask you this because this is something I've uh, like that I love ab- uh, about being from New York. It's like, yo, we came out here, and there's very few people that want to work as quickly as we want to work. My God! First it's of like, all, if you're on a line somewhere in LA, no one has a sense of urgency, no. right? Like yo, they're not I was working just fast. Talking about that, they're not working fast to like get that line shorter. In New York, someone sees a line, they're like, okay, let me work fast to like make these people's day better, you know? So that's just like the same sentiment, same thing, you know? But uh when you meet like-minded individuals that are like, yo, let's go, let's make this happen. Let's do it. Um, it's good. But you know what? Honestly, there is balance. Cause like, honestly, the lifestyle of LA is chill too. Cause it's like, it'll get done. We're, we're taking it in. We're not going to respond balance. immediately, balance. you know, and, and it'll get done. It'll get done. So there is balance is, is important. I'm with you with that sense of urgency. Being, being from new Orleans, like service industry, sense of urgency, like everything was on point. And then I got out here and it was good for me. Cause I was running circles around people. Mm. And, but I also had to teach them and, and show them, you know, what was possible with sense of urgency. And well, if you don't mind, tell me what's going on with you. Cause I've just met you and I'm curious what you're I mean, I, I, you know, I worked with Mikey. I was a TSA lead when he got there. So I kind of, he was one of the people who trained me to be a TSA. Right. Yeah. I, I, I was there, but like when he got in, I was like, I was bitter. And so what's happening, right? Is this temporary or this is. Yeah. So basically what happened, I was working for SB and like all these other, you know, restaurant bartending jobs and I was just miserable pretty much gave up on acting. I was just going through the, you know, the everyday procedure of, you know, work, getting up, sleeping all day, work, you know, rinse and repeat. So then um, May 20th, 2016, I went mountain biking and I jumped off some and it, everything changed. Spinal cord injury, just instantly paralyzed. Probably the best thing that ever happened to me, dude. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. It changed and, perspective and like yes. yeah. And it, and it, like you said, it aligned my path on like what I was here to do. And I just had to reset. I had to reset in a major hardcore way because I wasn't doing it on my own. I didn't like I knew something was wrong, but I was one of those people that like I know something's wrong, but I'm just gonna keep doing this shit that makes me insane. You know? 
So this happening to me just forced me. I and it got rid of all the distractions. Bartending, the money that was that I was making, the the women. I mean, I had I was in a relationship at the time, but you know it, that all kind of goes together, and it forced me to kind of f- figure out my path again. Mm, yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, I love and it. I mean, obviously, it's, you know, it, it's a shitty situations in in more way than, more ways than one, but it also opened up so many different avenues and communities, and you know, I've done more in the past six years than I did. I've done I did until the thirty three years that I was alive before it. So. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Well, I thank you for sharing. Yeah, man. Just, and then, and then with this, how inspirational it is. Yeah. Because the, how many people be able to go with what, what he went through and not? It was the best thing that happened, but also like, man, f- I love when he comes here. The glow on his face, right. the energy—it's like it's infectious. It's <laughs> right. like it just makes me feel good. I'm like, oh, I f- love this dude. But 100%. then, like, uh, you know, I think we've talked about this in the past, but Mikey was one of the only people that called me when I was alone. Like after my accident, I, I was completely alone, living in a studio and. F- Van Nuys, just like, you know, my f-ing bourbon here and just, you know, f-ing depressed, lonely. And out of everyone that I worked with, he, we weren't even close friends. We were, we were cool. He calls me, hey man, what are you doing? I'm like, why is this guy calling me? Calls me again. Hey man, what, you want to come over? Let's just, let's just hang out for lunch. And this is kind of where Chaos Control was born. Yeah. But we, I, al- we also had, like, what most people don't realize about that story is we both went through something traumatic two weeks apart because you went mountain biking to get your mind off of one of your best friends who passed away in a motorcycle accident, Eric, who I knew and worked with for a long time. And two weeks before that, one of my close friends, Peely, who Danny knows as well, died in a motorcycle accident. So it's like, I remember when you when you all came to Peely's thing, I was a mess and everyone was there to pick me up and we went to Eric's thing. You were having such a hard time and everyone was there to pick you up. So it's like, there was that connection in that. And I was in such a dark place as a human being that most people didn't know about for such a long time. So I was like, I know what this dude, I don't know exactly what he's going through, but I know what that dark hole feels like. And I don't want anybody to ever feel like the way I f-ing felt. So like, we were cool, go back. I got to reach out to him. That's just kind of how, I feel like I went through everything I went through to help other people because I don't ever think a human, I would never wish it upon my worst enemy to feel as low as I did when I tried to take my own life where it's like, yo, nobody should feel that way. Well, I didn't know that. Nobody I didn't, should feel I didn't that, know that. that I didn't know that. Yeah. And well, then just being lonely, man, like having somebody reach out to you that you never know, like you said, you never know what somebody's going through. So yeah. to, somebody, just to reach out, like I, I texted someone randomly the other day, Shay. I just like, hey, I, I was thinking about it. She's like, oh, that's great. She was hanging out with Tommy. And um, the reason I say that is like, People pop into your head for a reason. Yeah. Reach out. Reach out. Well, yeah. first of all, life is fragile. Well, obviously, we yeah, were talking exactly, about now. It's exactly. Like, that's a big thing. Like, life is fragile. As yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like people think it's like not masculine or something to be like, yo, man, I miss you. Thinking about you. You know, like, like that. Like, bro, I had every call. Yeah. One of my boys, I didn't have a call. You, yeah. you, I, right, cool. I love you, bro. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Like, it, it's, yeah, it, it, there's this, there's this stigma of being a male and not being able to talk about your feelings. And then it's like, yo, that's what we need, man. Yeah. Like, I feel so good when I, when my boys like, yo, man, love you. Thank you for this. That's like, oh man, I, I'm appreciated. One of yeah. my boys like actually gives a f- That's, that's cool. Mm-hmm. I'm cared about. Yeah. I mean, it's, you receive it small. Like one of the things I always laugh at is like when people are like, miss ya. Love ya. Like, why? You're afraid to say you? Like, yeah. it's things like, like, well, I, like, you know. and like yo, it goes a long way, man. The Seriously. world is so shit, So it's just like, and like, I feel I mean, I feel like a lot of time I'm getting beat up. Like no matter what I do, I just, I can't get past the hump. I can't do it. I can't get there. But then just having one of the homies like, yo man, you're killing it. I appreciate you. I enjoy watching. Yeah. It's like, oh, man, at least I'm making a difference. Right. Like, and that, that's the biggest thing. I think that's where people lose focus on. It's like, it's not about the show you put out, the movie you're in, the performance I have. It's not about us. It's about the people that we're touching that are watching us that right. we've created, uh, you know, our own viewership fans. Well, what's good with this audience? Like who's, who's this audience? So pretty much we got across the board. We started off as a mental health um, podcast associated with the nightlife industry because we've all been in nightlife and the mental toll that the nightlife has taken on so many people that's another major industry where it's not discussed like we gotta we have to be hospitable we have to put on a f-ing face all the time make sure everybody else is good around us but there are so many that we're suffering and I think the coolest thing that we always talk about we did 38 episodes on season one I knew every single person for at least five to ten years I learned something new about every single person and it was something new that I learned was a strong they were going through mm-hmm. yeah. so right now that we have like the whole nightlife entertainment industry but now we're looking to branch out because yo man the world's a really shitty place everybody is struggling with some with their own type of chaos do you talk to any bottle girls that are no longer bottle girls and now the they're time. exclusively only fan models 
Uh, not exclusively. <laughs> I didn't know you were going models. there with that. But. Well, exclusively Insta models first, because uh, that, that's yeah. how bottle service changed. All those hot girls that used to be bottle service girls, they don't even have to do it anymore because now they're Insta models. But now they don't even have to do that anymore. They're only fans models. You know. I think a lot of the ones that we that we worked with that aren't still doing bottle service have found like their own niche, their own yeah. niche that you know they had a Selling business. Selling beads they on Etsy. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's cool to see where people have come. You know how we. Like you said, they struggled mentally and like some of those beautiful people that you've ever seen and they were like dying inside and you never thought about that. Mm. I mean, we just want to like humanize everybody because there's so many people that would like look at what we do, right? And just see, I think, bro, think about the people we grew up with back home when they see our Instagrams and stuff right. like that. They're like, oh, must be f***ing nice to be you guys hanging with celebrities, yeah. going to parties. And we're right. like, yo, man, if you only knew, right. you see in 30 seconds of that clip. So like the point of this show is we want to take all those people that a lot of people, you know, we've had a bunch of girls on here with OnlyFans, with a couple of millions of followers, models, sh- like that. But it's like, yo, man, they're human beings too. They can have a hard time every day just like you do. It's like, yo, we're all very connected. We're all human beings. We're all struggling with something that should not be looked past. And we as a culture seem to do that. 100%, man. Also, we we, we got taught a little OnlyFans. Um, who knows where this episode is going to line up, but, you know, we had someone who who was an Insta model and she's like, what what is the stigma against OnlyFans? Yes, yeah, some people do it, you know, they, they're sending ex- explicit shit, but you know, she's like, I have all these followers and I've, I already post this. Why don't I take advantage of what everybody else is doing and just post what I'm already posting I make and get paid for it? Why not? First right? of all, OnlyFans, not to, to give them a plug, they are, they really, they want to be more of a general entertainment platform. Uh, but yeah, no shame against anybody who does OnlyFans. I'm jealous. Yeah. You're crazy. It Actually, really that, that day, uh, Only Wheels was, was born. So oh, uh, there you go. Yeah, you yeah. Know I mean, I, now you know what though? I'm sure you'll have an audience out there, my man. There is, trust me. I'm sure. You know how many times? Uh, how many? No, there's like crazy DMs. Isn't there like, there's like a whole community you 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 told us. There, there's, there's a like, community of people just like uh, you know obsessed with people with disabilities. You know, I'll, I'll get I'll get people asking they want to see my atrophied legs because you know right. with spinal cord injury you don't use the lower half of your body so your legs atrophy and like people want to see that. You could be crushing it on OnlyFans. I'm telling you, right? <laughs> Only wheels. <laughs> Only wheels. I got to get like a stunt wheelchair so nobody knows. Hey, that's Danny's wheelchair. I know yeah. that one. <laughs> <laughs> Only wheels. <laughs> as, as we shot off topic. But yeah, man, it, it's, been, it's been super cool. Like we, I, I'm definitely so grateful from everything we've come up with. Like it's really cool being out and having people like, yo, man, oh, you, you, uh, you're one of the hosts of Chaos Control, right? I'm like, yeah, like, oh, oh yo, I, I love listening to your guys' show when I'm getting ready for work because everyone's like, we remember. Think about it was like nine o'clock. You're like, I'm putting on my f-ing black pants. I'm taking a f-ing shot, putting on f-ing deodorant, taking a shot. Just like, f-ing, I have to go to this again. So people are like, yo, man, that's what I'm listening to your show. And be like, all right, there's other people that think this sucks too. It's not just mm. me. And they well, made it. What's the latest with LA Nightlife now? I'm not, so I'm more involved in the festival circuit. Right. So I don't really know as much, but like, I gotta feel like it's it's not in the way it was when we were all working in it, when Danny was in it before us. Like, I feel like LA Nightlife has really shifted. There's been a lot of culture change. Most people like just don't want to deal with that right. shit anymore. I think people are overspending stupid amounts. Right, culturally, of money. it's not the thing to like, yo, bottle service tonight. Like, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, in a festival world, we're still well, that's it, but that's a yeah. whole different yeah. beast and animal. I think like nightclubs, like now all these tick, like nightclubs used to be about exclusive and buying your way in and being around celebrities. Now it's just all these influencers and TikTokers, and everyone's like, I don't really need to be there with that. And I think now it's like it, it went from like. Our era of the the night super nightclubs to now it's like ultra lounges mm-hmm. where people want to they, they're able to have conversations I guess I don't I don't really go out that much anymore but I don't like going out you know what I'm saying like really high end restaurant is going out right yeah here. bro like you talk about being an extrovert like I'm such an introvert like doing this it's great I love it 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 brings me up but then like I said there's always a when you're up there's a down so after you do a week I crash I work in a I work in a festival system where I'm around people 24 seven that's like Maybe. super stimuli like yeah dude stimuli, it, and like we're talking about crazy. spiritually young yeah. empath so I take yeah. all of that on mm-hmm. I need to recharge and like as you know somebody deals like your own spirituality when you're doing that shit you need a break yeah you need to can bring it back like I, I, kudos to you that your social battery is always full it takes me a while man i need to recharge for a good amount of time well i'd like i hope to be busy enough where you sort of earn the opportunity to like do nothing you know that there's nothing better than that as great as being out there is when you feel like you're fulfilled and you're like your your keg is tapped with them being at home feeling 
successful like you know just feeling like oh i did something like that's a really good feeling yeah but oh, yeah. realistically after two you can you can feel like that like oh i have nothing to do but after day. two days yeah, you gotta get you're fucking crawling oh, in your skin right right so it's right. like like I, I can't do it i can't just sit around i have to be productive and it's like is that a good thing or a bad thing that's no, a good thing I mean, yes, but then there's also the other side. It's like, okay, well, what type? And this is just me playing devil's advocate because I agree with you. I'm going to work my ass yeah. until I f***ing die doing what I want to do. But there are so many people that look at us and like, you guys aren't living a full life. You're not getting to experience things. And it's like, well, like what? what you're looking on it for. No, yeah. now, I'm, now I'm curious. Like what? I mean, people are like, oh well, well, <laughs> oh, well, you know, you're in your mid thirties. You're not married. You don't have kids. I'm like, okay, well, in New York, where, where I'm from, you guys can do that in your 20s. Right. I'm cool. We're doing something different. Yeah, right, right, right. You know what I mean? It's a different yeah. world. But there's only people like, oh, you're missing out on family. You're missing out on the But that'll all children. come. But that'll all come. And, yeah, but, but according to society, there's a timeline. Yeah. For that, and we're going against that grain. Well, different, different world out here. Different world. I mean, it's definitely... What have you noticed living out here in LA much different than being in New York and or anywhere else you've lived? Well, in? funny enough, I actually grind more in LA. Even though New York is like yeah, stereotypically like more grind, grind, grind. But New York is just more of a full life there. Here, I, you got nothing but your your, your thing. That's it. Like you wake up and that's your thing. New York, there's a full city of real life. Walk, subway, pizza, friends, family, just living. You know, yeah. here it's just, it's the business, you know, and there's not that like constant interaction of people. Like you could spend the whole day in New York just like walking around, hopping on the train, like living it up. I, I no. love working in New York. Like ever since uh, I think it was like 2018, I did a reading for a play in a small little room in Lower Manhattan, and and every year since I've gone back to do that same reading, and like I just I love I love just getting lost. I go on the I go into the street and I just roll for like hours and hours and hours, and every and I you see something new in, at, in every block. You can't do that yeah. here. You can't do that no. in LA. New York has so much culture. Yeah, like worldwide culture. LA is still a, pretty fake. And yeah. there's just like one thing. Everyone's talking about what they're doing. In New York, everybody's actually doing no, something. No, that's the real world over there. That's the real world. This is not, I stay out of those like, subways. Over the, it's you. just a, re if you use like a movie set sure, as a friendly. metaphor, it's like this is the stage where like it's all make believe and it's happening. And then like the back of house is like in New York where there's like people with real jobs. But if you're in a crew of five people when you're in New York, it's like, oh, this guy's in real estate, marketing, something. Finance, you know, finance, in finance, finance obviously finance. finance. A union worker. Here, it's just the opposite. Here, it's four people in show business and one person that might be in real estate or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's just beauty completely, influencer. completely different lifestyles and yeah. everywhere you are. So brother, you got so much going on. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to doing and like that you're focused on now? And how, and like, what's the future look like for, uh, for, for the show? Thank you. Well, we just launched a new LLC, Hyperactive. Thanks. Dramatic, well, dramatic pause. Insert, right, right. insert here. Yeah, dramatic pause. <laughs> uh, you know, let people, let, let, it, let, let it wash over say people. Say it one more time. Uh, <laughs> hyperactive. And, um, you know, so we're launching new celebrity podcast. We, uh, you know, hopefully be positive feedback from the scripted series, you know, always launching new unscripted series. I have a laundry list of development projects that I want to get done, build the team, get that investment and just grow the business, work on camera, just like have a full, full life. That's all. And as again, just like even coming here, I'm almost feeling like uncomfortable talking about stuff because I just want to like stay grounded and just be like grateful for everything. It's like more and more and more and lock things in and, and just like keep going on this path. Hopefully, you know, by the time this airs, maybe a new apartment. Um, it's it's expensive. Yo, man, it's it's, it's only getting more f expensive. It's crazy. So so so, where's Dylan when you know when you have all these projects and they're they're f doing amazing and you're just like I can chill. Where where what does Dylan do? Where does he live? Where are you going? Watch Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> watch Seinfeld. So you could check out all new Seinfeld, where you know I wrote and created uh all new one minute episodes of Seinfeld, where I played all the characters and I wrote original scripts because at the time my I was locked out of a Hulu account when Seinfeld was on Hulu and it was 2020 and I was like yo I want to I was just thinking about Seinfeld and I was like. I was just in my head. It was like Kramer, Jerry, Elaine, you know, George's voice. So then I just did them and then we put out nine, nine of those episodes. Uh, so that was awesome. But that was the genesis to evolve and then do the scripted series, which was like, okay, this is a more flushed out version of that same kind of shtick. Um, but yeah, I love Seinfeld. I love haircuts. Um, I mean, that's, I love the Giants. No, I made a list a few years ago of like what I'm passionate about. No lie. It was like haircuts, Seinfeld, Giants. And then uh, I'm working with the Giants. I'm always getting a haircut, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Got to get a haircut. And so, I was so. telling you, I was not expecting that hair when he when he took his Where'd hair off. I was like, yes. Well, I was gonna, I was you know debating leaving the hat on and stuff, but you know we'll see. 
fucking amazing hair, man. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Seriously. He's got Seinfeld he takes after. You do everything after Entourage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, fact. I mean, from, from New York, I mean, he gets that too. We've yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. how we, we, I think we've watched a bunch of Entourage yeah. episodes just kicking it. Like, well, you're I from left, New York? Yeah. I left DBA to go be in the Entourage movie. Yeah, just you did. In the, in the background. Did yeah. you do background? I'm the background? I'm the DJ at the party. Oh, no, no back if you just squint like you'll see <laughs> yes. way in the back yes way, so now though, look at that credit on yeah. but that was fun you know what the best part of that was just being there like being this close to the four of them and just watching them work because there were shots when i was not on camera and they were just doing their thing and obviously what, like the show what, what was that like because we talk about that all the time all the time dude it was just well first of all when you're there watching just to see actors work they basically just repeat their performance like they did it like four times and so there's nothing magic about it they just like said action did their scene action again did it this basically almost the same way four times so to see like jeremy piven deliver pretty much similarly every take which is a good lesson too because it's like you're supposed to do something right now pretty much do the same thing every time was a good lesson and then they might give you one and say all right let's try something different but that was good to just see them work and then what about when they're when they weren't shooting that Cause it, you always hear stories of like their interactions on set. It's just like it's just like a party. Well, was that it, was, was a party scene, but no, I I don't think I, they're probably not hanging around. I don't I don't recall. I think they just like went their separate ways. Yeah, because at that point they had done so many seasons. They're yeah, they're probably hanging in their trailer. Yeah, but you know, Kate Upton was supposed to be Emrata in that movie, and Kate Upton wasn't available, or she passed, so Emrata did it. Yeah, Emrata is nice. Emrata is nice. She is. I like Kate Upton. Uh, like Kate, Kate Upton is nice too. Kate Upton is very, very nice. You're all welcome on the show, by the way. <laughs> Brother, what? I mean, you've done some really cool. Shit. What other like crazy stories you got? Or, like wild shit that you have fucking seen in this industry that you could speak about legally? Uh, right that's crazy. I mean, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I think the best. Oh no. So the lesson I wanted to say, I think that's that's, that's the valuable stuff is like, you know, um, you know, not to be on your level of an accident, but I did bang up my leg once a while ago. <clears throat> you know, before I did any of this, while I was still in New York, still live in New York, and I was on the couch, not able to walk really for like a week. My leg was wrapped up, and I was thinking to myself, wait, last week I was fully healthy, and I was doing the exact same thing I'm doing right now, laying on the couch doing nothing. So if I want to go out there and be Edgy Ryan Seacrest, I got to go out there and make life happen. So as soon as my leg was ready, I started to make that show. So that was really the lesson. Same thing, I mean, to go even backtrack, same thing happened um, in high school, I was playing football, broke my ankle, couldn't play football, did the school play. So it's just like how taking something that you think, oh, this sucks and taking the positive from it. So the make life happen thing, getting the ultra job, like that was a big lesson for me for sure, which is the constant reminder of like, go make life happen. Yeah. And you never know what a, a setback is just some, it, it's just a, a way for you to like figure out what to do after. So setbacks are good. Like this was a huge setback, mm. but I learned from it. Right. Like you always, neg good or bad, you're going to learn, you're going to, take a, that lesson and use it somewhere later in life. I always say that like the things that I did 10 years ago, I, I didn't, I thought were, you know, minuscule to my life. 10 years later, I think about it. Something similar happens. I'm like, Oh wait, I know how to deal with that situation now. So everything is, a, everything is a, a seed that is planted early in life and you just have to like, let it grow. And then one day you'll, you'll see that flower and be like, okay, I, I, I learned from this. I, I watched it grow. Now I know how to and move on. Mm -hmm. What does Mike the situation say? It's not a step back. It's not a step setback. It's a something. He's always got <laughs> love Jersey Shore. Not, yeah, not you, you definitely could have been on Jersey Shore. Love, I mean, that would have been amazing. But the, the original, like the OG, that was amazing. Jersey Shore, like what a time. Bro, I remember like, being down at the shore and seeing them film that. Yeah, yeah man. Oh, definitely being like, I was go. out at Bamboo. I was at let's DJ, go. man. Like, you're just like, oh. And like, but the funny thing is like, yo, there was nothing. Oh, I, I mean, granted, it was like, semi-guided scripted but like yo everything was legit bro, bro. all that the people show, on there was legit that like, show was not scripted for the first few seasons maybe toward the last season they started to produce shit but that's what made it so good is like they were just organic themselves authentic like that's what they do so god bless them i'll always have a special place in my heart for jersey shore one of the best unscripted television shows of all time but we also know like it's really legit because if you go to jersey everybody is really like that oh 100 <laughs> but the cat i mean i'd love to talk to sally ann who created that show because it's like that's they they weren't just five guidos like that was specifically Specific, cast yeah, in a certain way because like they're not like if you they're not even the most guido guidos like if you went to jersey shore oh, it's there's like way more guido dudes than them um so they really did it they just crushed it with the casting so let's hear about y'all's uh 
You got any fun stories of you two hanging out back in the day when you first got to LA? Yo, honestly, man, it, the cool, the thing I always loved about him is like we worked in shows, but anytime I was with him, it was always like this and it was always conversation like this. It was always like, yo, what's the end game? Yo, what's the goal? Yeah, just trying yo, to what's like, the idea? Just like, do some shit. Yeah, that's why I always like with him because like I could not see him for like six, seven months, and it's like, what you up to? What you up to? Yeah, what yeah. can we be up yeah. to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, so like that's that's the cool part when you get people like that are on the same wavelength. So it's been super dope that when I met him ten years, like eight, nine years ago at this yeah, point, yeah, nine years ago, that we were at this level, but we've both seamlessly mm -hmm. come up, and now I'm so proud of what he's doing. Like he's come to all of my events, and like there's just mutual support. Yeah, but also coming to work. I was always hyped because you were my friend. Yeah, he, exactly. he, like we were, yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, like, we also didn't really know a lot of people. Yeah, at that being point, New York, so you brand just like, new. Yeah, yeah. Just brand new, New York, New York but no, boys. You had, you had, you, were, you, you're good at that. Like you get in places and like you're like in, you're like running. Because I'm, I, I just work hard yeah. and like we go. I mean. You weren't the best TSA, so like I was able to, <laughs> so like I was able to, like I was hanging out. I was, I was just he, hanging. He was more like you talk about like manifesting hot girls. He be, be like, yo, Dylan, we get this. He's like, oh, I'm talking to this girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Facts, facts, facts. No, but that honestly, being at that place was fun. You make a lot of yeah, connections there. Definitely, lot, like, that's what this nightlife has definitely been huge for. Especially yeah. me, it's just like all these connections. I mean, bro, this podcast happened. Everyone who's come on is because of somebody we've met in the nightlife yeah. setting who's just like, I love what you guys are doing. Let's let me help out. Let me come on. Let me talk to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, the goal is to not do nightlife anymore, right? Though, like, that's, but it's not, you don't want to, it's not like a bad thing to do, but the idea is to just do that until you cannot do that anymore, I guess. I mean, or go th go into professionally, like, if you go into run, run a club, yeah. be the manager, or you, or you like, do it, you own something you own, yeah. like that. Like, I mean, there definitely is, you know, and a lot of people do it. A lot of people yeah, love God it. Bless them. Yeah, yeah, God like, bless them. Yeah. Like, if you love what you're doing, yeah. great. That you know what, though? Garbage, but the like, TSA, you don't make the money compared to the bottle girls. If the bottle girls, Keep doing that for life. You're making bank. Yeah, we made. Shit. Yeah, we made. Shit. We made. Shit. We had to clean up. Shit. And we also made. Shit. Compared to other people's jobs, though, we we did all right. We 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 got spoiled. Yeah, we we got spoiled because I'd rather be making the shit that we were making than working a nine to five, and in, in an office yeah. making minimum wage. You know what I mean? Yeah, but when I mean, we were DBA, the money wasn't as good. Like when I was working with you, we were at the height of the Greystone days. Where we yeah. were pulling in. Between eight hundred and fifteen hundred a shift. Stop. The, yeah, he's like, like he's like, wow. bro, we, we barely broke one fifty. Dang, that sounds like, awesome. One fifty two, yeah. Bro, like, no, if you got a good server job, like you can live, man. That, but that was hard too, dude. I couldn't even get like a server job that I could live off of. Like, it's not that easy to just like go in there and get a job that like pays you well. Like, I was trying to work in WeHo at like bartender, couldn't get a job. Like, server, hopefully a place takes you. Nightlife, you know, try yeah. to do like a couple things at once. Now you know where I made bank. Working in New York City at Guy Fieri's Times Square restaurant back in the day. Really? Two job, a, t a bartender and a server. That was like, whoa, you make real money. I was like, it had to be a tourist trap, right? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, those are like the Times best. Square? Times Square, guy. It's not even open anymore, but like that was before I moved to LA. I was a bartender in, in Guy Fieri's restaurant. Not a good server in a, in a good sense, in a classic sense. Great server as far as like keeping the people entertained. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So managers would hate me. But the people like me. <laughs> yeah. Kind of go hand in hand. Brother, it, it's been a crazy road for you when you talked about a lot of the lessons that you learned. Give us a couple things that like, there's so much information people can take from listening to you on this episode. What's something that you're so grateful for from this whole journey? A couple, like, it doesn't have to be just one thing, but what's something you're really grateful for? People, anything like that, that like, you know, really- Well, I mean, I'm grateful that I have a great family. You know, that's awesome. So- uh, no one's really out here. My sister's been out here lately, but just like, you know, parents that believe in you and people that you could call a uh, big, large family. That's just like, you could just call that has support for you. You know, just like when you talk to them on the phone, that's huge. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that's probably, that's where I go to the most. I definitely have a few close friends in LA, but not like a ton of friends. So I'm grateful for my close friends that, you know, I could call and, and talk to about that. Uh, great. I mean, grateful. I'm, what am I grateful for? I'm grateful for my ability to talk to people. Thank you, God. I'm grateful for my ability to like, you know, be outgoing, I'm grateful for my ability to, you know, you know, yeah, it'd be upbeat and, and hopefully, you know, let my, let my colorful personality shine you know in, in places uh, so that's that's i think, I think it shines pretty well bro. yeah yeah, yeah. that's, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the gratitude yeah allow me yeah allow me to be my, my best self and stuff like that so 
I, I think that's what I have to offer is just like trying to, you know, be as best of a human as possible, you know, not trying to like get over on people or have any uh, uh, agendas. You know, a lot of people are like, well, why do you want to do that? I'm like, uh, why not? Just to do it. You know, I don't really have like motives besides like things could be, let's do it. If things could get done and we could like impact society in a positive way, like just do it. It's not about like financial gain. That's why I really need like a partner who's like more of a shark about the money. Cause like, I'm more just like, whatever, have, let's do you it. Have like your side. Yeah. Like, let's just do it. It's fine. You know, whatever. You're creative and you and you like pursuing those creative ideas. I'm grateful that I've been ha having uh, the opportunity to work with great people that that allow me to continue to work with them. That's. But you that's also, I mean, you also got to make sure you're taking advantage of all those opportunities too. Just because you're getting them doesn't mean that you're actually impressing somebody. So you've done a great job of being like, oh, this guy's fucking dope. He brings a lot of great energy and continue to keep moving with people. Well, I'm very grateful for my ability to deliver on the good work, and that's what I say. It's like, yo, we're gonna do good work. Like, you know what I'm saying? Bottom bottom line is, we're gonna do good work. So the people that I've been fortunate enough to work with, everyone's very very talented, and like my my thing is like empower people to do what they're good at. Like, don't try to micromanage. It's like, if that's your thing and you're good at that, God bless. Crush it. Go for it. Do your thing. Damn you know, not getting in their way. I mean, you're you're already successful and that's just going to continue to grow your success and yeah. make you more of a household name. And brother, that's 100%. Well, that's the goal, you know, just Ma be more. Manifesting, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. But the industry changed, you know? So it's like, if you're not like those host jobs don't exist, right? To be an on-camera personality. Like, even if it did, they're probably hiring an influencer or a celebrity. But even at that point, they don't even exist. But I mean, we could all talk about that, like being an, you know, when they're like, oh, you got to get your social media up. It's like being an influencer is like a specific skill set. Like that's just not like, oh, you do your thing and you're on social media. It's like there, it's a thing. So not everybody, not everybody is that. Well, most so people don't realize how much you got to do to put into that, how much content you got to no, make. No, it's like beyond a full-time job. So for, I know for me, like when you're work, try and pay rent, that's why it's like a lot of successful people are kids because you're just at home not paying rent. You could just like make TikToks all day. God bless, you know, but there's, you know, you're an adult. You got to pay your rent. You're work worried about paying your rent, but you know, what? at the end of the day, there's no excuses, just results. As long as you keep on doing it, you don't give up. You're going to find a way. Yeah. Like, what is it? Like you don't quit. I mean, sorry, you don't fail. You quit. Yeah. Most people well, quit right before that. There's, there's like a law of momentum that like, it can't not happen. As long as you like work toward it, it can't not happen. So as long as you're like taking steps to make it happen, it can't not happen. Yeah. And, I, and like you said, every failure is not a failure. As long as you look at it as a lesson, you're going to keep compounding I lessons. I mean, that's the thing too. It's not a sprint. It's not a race. No, I mean, that's the thing too. Sprint, there's, plenty of things a that, there's plenty of things that haven't worked out, but it's just learning. You're like, all right, I guess I back to the job. Yeah. yeah. Back, as long as you get, as long as you get that thick skin and be adaptable, you're going to figure out how to make it in the city and in what you're doing. Yeah. But you got to, you got to be adaptable. Exactly. No, so that's it's like, that's the biggest thing uh, that is. Cause most, I mean, we all came out here with an idea of my life's going to look like right. this and we are all so far removed yeah. from what we actually thought it was. Gonna yeah. Look like. Yeah. Yeah. There's no right way. No, just, just do it. Yo brother. It's been so great having you on the show. Love your insight. Love your energy. Love everything about you. And can't wait to see more of what you're doing. Uh, thank you for being here till now. Uh, Dylan Landon at Dylan Landon on Instagram. Good kid from Brooklyn out now. New digital series. Check that out. we got the impulsive show rocking every week on Tuesdays, the Eli Manning show across the giants, digital networks, launching new so shows soon. And just hit me on IG and let's, let's rock. Thank you guys for having me. Yes. This man's got it going on. If you could bottle up that energy and sell it to me, I'll take it right on. Well, <laughs> We could. Brother, we could. Yeah, right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And shout out to the crew. Yay, Yay. crew. Yeah, thank you everybody for checking us out. We'll catch you next time on a chaos. Peace.